It's been a year, folks. A year since Designing 4 got the big bump from Quentin Reviews. And although we've still got a ways to go, we couldn't be more grateful for the continued support of those that have stuck with us for so long. We feel like, in order to celebrate the occasion, we should do something a bit special, and pick what might be my favorite level in all of gaming, at least in regards to something that undebatedly qualifies as a video game level. It's a level that many of you have probably seen, but don't know the full story of. I know I didn't, back when I first saw it almost a decade ago. I wanted to celebrate one YouTuber bumping up another, and no other level embodies that spirit quite as much as this one. It is the internet. It is artistic expression. And although it may sound cheesy, it's the very human spirit. This is Automatic Mario. No part of this YouTube video is original, and yet it manages to form an incredibly unique identity anyway. The level really just plays out a hacked Super Mario World ROM. It was created using Lunar Magic, a level editing software. The idea of levels that play themselves have existed in Mario ROM hacks before, usually for the sake of spectacle rather than any sort of rigorous structure. And above all, the music choice. The song is Kumi Kyoku Niko Niko Doga, and for those of you who aren't nerds in Japan, this is a very deliberate selection. You see, Kumi Kyoku is a medley, a medley of some of the nerdiest yet most awesome songs the creators could think of. All of them are intrinsic to the identity of what it means to be some dude on the internet, and Niko Niko Doga itself is essentially the Japanese version of YouTube. It can be nostalgic, it can be lonely, it can be sad, it can be self-degrading, and sometimes it can be needlessly hype over... You are so beautiful, beautiful. For absolutely no reason. Every song in the medley is taken from some anime or game that the creators like, and the jarring shift in subject material is an amazing contrast to just how perfectly the song flows together musically. It all has nothing to do with anything, but that's great! I can't even express how much greater it is than the sum of its parts. Some of my favorite parts of it are actually the songs taken directly from other Nico Nico videos, of which there are quite a few. These songs all have ties back to games as well, making the long chain of memes and references even longer, but even these are chosen with care. The two Mega Man themes aren't Air Man Stage and Wily Castle 1, they're I Can't Defeat Air Man and Okusenman, about the struggles of a kid trying to beat a video game and an adult depressed that he'll never live those days again, respectively. There's Beware the Forest Mushrooms from Super Mario RPG, changed into a rap in Rawest Forest, and then changed again into a surreal dance that no one can understand. There's a puzzle game theme, now sung by Toho characters, that laments the problems of flat-chested girls. It revels in being out there and weird, but just before it goes too far, it sings the Japanese national anthem set to the main themes of Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, and it follows it up with a song about worshipping girl figurines you bought from a machine. Brilliant satire, just, just ab absolutely brilliant. Yeah. It even ends on a rather depressing melody called Sakura, that stands in stark contrast to the energy of the rest of the song. But what this actually is, was a song that played instead of a video that had been deleted. I can't think of a better way to end it, honestly. The song embraces its heritage as much as it lambasts it. And that kind of conflict, the kind of internal and external energy in all directions at once? Well, that's the internet right there. Automatic Mario is a natural evolution of all of this. 
it's as much of a tribute to the original medley as the medley itself was to the songs it used. It's a tribute to Mario, and it's a tribute to the original videos, showing the Okusaman kid with spoons on his eyes or logos from air built right into the level design. It's a tribute to the hacking community and the tools that were used to build it. The level ends with exactly 9 seconds on the clock, which is the memeiest number to ever meme if you know anything about Japanese memes. There's been automatic levels before, sure, but none to this scale and, to my knowledge, none that sync the level itself to the background music. In this way, the sound effects of the game almost become their own musical instrument. An entirely new medium of self-expression, made from pieces that were already there. And the level wraps itself in a simple message. Thank you, not only to the viewers watching it, but to all the countless voices that made it possible in the first place. This kind of level is something that could never happen in any official product. It could only come from the depths of the internet. You probably didn't watch it in its original version, but it getting reposted a million times on YouTube just speaks to its legacy even more. It breaks all sorts of copyright laws. It took far too much effort to make for anything but a passion project. It only runs on an emulator, and no one but the creator will ever know all that went into it. It's a celebration of everything that culture is, and that's undeniably beautiful. It was hugely inspiring for me ten years ago, and now it's even more inspiring for me as a creator that wants to show all the good that this nerdy media can bring. And that... That is how you design for Remix.